Hello everybody, welcome back to Mortar of the Dips of Vision, all tips and tricks. Today we will be taking a tour through level 4, talking about what you need to survive, what types of threats are there, how to get there, and all that type of stuff. You know, you know the drill by now. So, level 4 is the first level that's not available in the shareware version, so you're going to have to be playing the full game to, to play level 4 and beyond. Level 4 is quite a bit more difficult than level 3. Level 3 you can Level 3 only has a few different monsters, I guess, that don't show up in level 2 and that are like a little bit stronger. Like Firegons, I think are some of the worst stuff you can fight in level 3. But level 4 has a lot of new monsters that can show up pretty much anywhere. So you'd better be prepared for resistances um you're going to need Paralysis and Drain Resist because Wraiths show up, and Wraiths paralyze and drain a very high amount of the time. Uh, you're probably going to want Fire Resistance because there's a lot of dragons on level 4. And aside from that, I mean, just the general resistances that you'd normally want. Stoning, just in case. Electrical isn't bad uh, to remember. I'm trying to remember if blue pelagons are fire or if they're cold, because they show up too. Anyway, uh, follow my mouse on the screen now. Uh, ways down to level 4, there's this way, uh, which I'm right next to, which will take you to um, the upper section. There, Level 4 is divided into two sections without a clear walkway through, like level 3. So... This will take you to the box section, which aren't, don't doesn't have any layer monsters, but has several teleporters, which can take you some interesting places. Uh, this teleporter will take you to a teleporter on four, which will take you to next to another teleporter on four, which will take you to a stud room on level five, which is fairly close to the Twisted Elf. Uh, it's kind of an intricate train, but that's a slightly faster way to go than taking down this staircase and then going to the to the other room slightly faster but it's about the same um also this teleporter no this one one of these two yeah i think this one will take you just straight down one level to level four and then there's which puts you in the lower area but in like a corner of the lower area it's like a water corner and then this staircase will just take you straight down to level four um right in right next to all the uh, layers of level 4. So, level 4 normally would take about 15 to 20 minutes to respawn, but my installation right now is bugged, so that monsters only take about 2 minutes to respawn. First thing to note about this entrance to level 4, uh, the upper entrance, well, I guess first thing to note is that you're in a little cube here, a little square, just a little office building, as I call it. But you also have these two teleporters right next to you. This is really important because they take you straight down to level 5. And right there is the stairs to level 6. So that's a very quick way of getting straight down to level 6 from level 3. Um, these teleporters on level 5 will just take you up back to level 4. It's a cool little interconnection thing so you don't have to wander around too much. I didn't realize that they were there and that's what they did my first playthrough. I was scared to hit any teleporter. But it's, it's nice to know the teleporter links uh, when you know them. So, outside in this little area... Now, there's monsters around every corner. Like, every time you hit a corner, there's going to be a different monster pack. Giant slugs, conjurers, you know, the usual. Oh, there's some pelagons, there's some were-rats. Just a mix of everything. Uh, these, these corners, like this one, and I think one of these ones up here. Anyway, these hallways very often have dragons in them, and so they're really good for just, just getting money. 
They're really good money farming. One of the stairs down to level 5. Oh, there's the wraith I talked about. Is right here. Which will put you up here. This little area. But the faster way to get to roughly the same area is just to use those teleporters. Mm. Now, I talked about this... I'm wandering around level 4 because... Yep, see? Monster's already respawning. I'm wandering around level 4 because there are two interesting packs of monsters that I want to try and show off if I can. They're both very rare, but they're both very interesting in that there's... Well... I'll talk about them. They're called Lynch Demons and Giant Leeches. They're both extremely dangerous, but for very different reasons. So this teleporter I talked a little bit about. It's one of the teleporters in the chain from level 3. It will just take you straight down to the stud room on level 5, from which you can quickly run over that direction to the Twisted Elf. Or just get down to six that way. Which will place you in a different area of level six than the teleporters. Uh, it'll place you right next to the Medusa. So that, that's pretty fun. This area always has sorcerers. Well, almost always has sorcerers, so be very careful. Um, this side of level four... Um, first of all, is interesting because there's just... A giant chain of rooms that you have to go through in a specific way to get anywhere. But this side of level 4 also happens to have the monster layers. As you'll see, I'm fighting just a lot of very different types of monsters still. Y y the variety is enormous. Oh, giant slug. This mouse off this off the map. Right here, this area, is home to the flame dragon. It's a fairly powerful dragon um, that can drop amulets of flame and amulets of life fairly commonly. Best way to take it down is drain touch. I'm fairly high level, but drain touch is amazing because it doesn't have magic resist. Now. It doesn't always drop amulets, but it still is worth a decent amount of gold, so it's usually worth hitting up if you can survive it. Again, as it's called the Flame Dragon, you're probably going to want fire resistance because its breath damage its breath weapon is very damaging. As for the other layer. Uh, if I can ever reach it. The other layer is up here. And it is the Dwarven Lord. And you'll see his Dwarven Guards outside, which don't deal too much damage, but take a lot of hits and are pretty resistant to a lot of things. And then the Dwarven Lord just inside who will likely take a fair bit of punishment. But he drops a lot of good equipment, a lot of steel items, you know, cap of defense, you saw right there. And he has two unique drops, the Dwarven Warhammer, which is a very strong weapon but takes a very high level to use, and Delvar's War Axe, which... Slightly weaker, but takes a slightly, you know, a little bit less of a level to use. This is just a usual lake area, has some ice demons in it. Not really worth too much experience, they only don't come in, they don't come in groups of fours quite as often as some other lakes. A little quicksand area up here, there's like, there's a stud room up here, but there's no real reason to come up here, as far as I'm concerned. 
Uh, Numenogs, what I just fought, are an interesting enemy in that they're one of the first enemies you can fight that are completely magic immune. Yeah, monsters start having some fun ideas down here. I forget if they can spawn on level 3, but they definitely spawn quite frequently on level 4. They're like the goblins of level 4. Why am I casting Charm of Opening and not my Crest of the Thief? I don't know. Um, this little section is kind of interesting because... Freaking teleport traps. One second. Um, Lodestone. Can we find Owen? Right three. No, right four. Forward negative three. Okay, so he's, he, oh, he's, he's not far at all. Yeah, that's fine. This little section is interesting because... There's just so many tiny rooms, and each tiny room has its own monster spawning. And so, especially when your game's bugged out like mine, it's a quick way of getting a lot of experience. Apparently, now according to the wiki at least, there's a monster called the Element Mage that should be able to spawn in this room that I'm standing in right here. But I so rarely find it, it doesn't really even have anything particularly notable about it. Aside from, it's like, you know, it casts some interesting spells. What the heck? And it can make a decent companion. Could you just stop failing to open teleport traps, please? Thank you. Owen, join us, please. Mm. What is that spell called? I don't know, lodestone cast it. Soul search. Right seven. No, left seven, forward six. Oh, she's right there. That's that's not that bad. Yeah, lodestones are pretty important around this time. I guess I should talk about teleport traps because they become very common on floor four. I don't think any... I don't think they show up before level four. But yeah, so be prepared to have your thief just leave your party quite a bit. If your thief is also like a very key member of your party and you can't bear losing them... Um, one way to deal with that is to do what I did, uh, have a lodestone on the rest of your party to be able to locate them. And then once you locate them, just using uh, either walking there or you can use uh, dislocation to teleport straight to their location. Be careful with dislocation because you can pop yourself straight into rock. Uh, generally you'll want to be facing north whenever you use it because its directions are relative to what direction you're facing. Uh, it's important to note because again it's extremely easy to you know get caught up and think you're facing one way when you're facing another and whoops you just rocked yourself. One of the like surefire ways of just losing people is messing around with dislocation when you are not prepared and it's so easy to type in just the wrong direction you think you're going right and then you're going left you think you're going up nope you're going down dislocation teleport i have too many problems with that, that I just choose not to use it, for the most part, unless I really need to. Flame dragon, could you die? And give me an item, please. Look, you can see it's worth quite a bit of gold, though. 
and it's not too strong. Like, it's quite strong, but it never has any uh, supporting monsters with it when it spawns, which is why Draining Touch is incredibly effective. I am just going on autopilot and going back down to level 4 or 5. Anyway, any other notable things? Teleporter there, teleporter there. Did not talk about the teleporter in the other room. Okay. And also I didn't talk about the secret way of shifting between zones. So here's a trick that you may or may not know. And why is it actually doing that? Why was it... Why is it... Like, poking out. This is not normal. I'm just noticing this right now. Whatever. Uh, so here's a trick that you may not know. Mortar maps uh, wrap around. Um, be very careful doing this. Make sure that you can see the entire map. Or, at the very least, make sure that the square in front of you is not rock. See, I'm going off the map, but it says, oh, that's not rock. And why is it not rock? You can ethereal portal through the edge of the map and pop in at the other edge. Uh, really helpful on level 4 if you get teleported to one side but want to be on the other. It's just a really nice way of cutting across. Uh, Pelagons show up a lot more than Phyragons. And that's important to note because Phyragons can have ball and chains, but Pelagons can't. Now I'm like 99% positive that this teleporter is I'm not even in a position to use it. 99% positive that this teleporter up here in this room is a group split teleporter. It's a random teleporter. Freaking heck, I'm on the wrong character. Hence the reason why I haven't even explored that tile on this run. But you know what? Let's do it. Let's let's show it off. Huh. Where am I? That is weird. Wait, what? That's where that goes? Why does it go there? Why is that how it happens? Why is that how it works? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no kidding. That teleporter just sends you three squares to the right. Why? What purpose does that have? I don't know, just to confuse you and disorient you. Uh, the dungeon starts doing a lot of that. Just random things that don't really do much, aside from completely disorient you if you don't have a map. Now that Wraith attacked before my thief. Wraiths have very high dexterity and can attack pretty quickly. Amulet of- what the freak amulet is that? An amulet of flames, yes. Uh, these are one of the rare items you can find on 4-4. One of, because there are certainly others, but they're like really rare. Anyway, I've been wandering around and I haven't found any. So this might be a good time to talk about... Uh, what the freak are they called? Any Anyway. Yeah, this might be a good time to talk about... Uh, lynch demons and giant leeches which can randomly show up in almost any square on level 4 and ruin your day. Not carrion crawlers, giant leeches. So, let's do that little warp trick again. Probably could have warped myself closer to the flame dragon, but whatever. Oh, another useful glitch to know is that if you enter a room and fall in a pit, at the same time, a monster won't spawn. You will overwrite the monster spawn by taking pit damage. A way to solve that is to leave the room and come back in. How did that click? Leave the room and come back in and not fall into a pit, and then you shouldn't have that issue. Uh, that issue will start becoming a lot more obvious on level 4, because as you can see, there's a lot of rooms that you just have to walk over pits to get through. A lot of these little square rooms have pits by the doors. So levitation is an extremely important as well if you want to walk around a floor 
for. Tome of Binding, another useful item. Where the heck are the lynch demons? Okay, lynch demons are completely magic immune and completely weapon immune. There's only one way to kill them, and spoiler alert, they're not immune to monster damage. You need to have companions in order to kill them. Luckily, majority of lynch demons will spawn with one or two groups of Kaelmeons, that if you have a charm spell, you can charm those and use them to kill the lynch demon. They're not too notable outside of that, they're just one of the screw you monsters that start showing up in level 4. The other pack of screw you monsters, also known as one of the insta-kill groups, are giant leeches. Yes, giant leeches. They can spawn anywhere. They are exceedingly annoying. Uh, they spawn in groups of like six to seven, four groups of six to seven or so. It's like maybe even up to eight, I forget. They are resistant to a lot of different types of magic. I don't know exactly which. I know that a lot of them don't seem to do much though. Not immune, but just highly resistant. And they have an exceedingly high attack stat, so they hit hard and hit often. They also have very high dexterity, so they hit first. If you're relatively low level and able to survive, you know, on level 4 for just a little bit, uh, chances are you'll walk into a room and instantly you will be dead. And that's how you know that you found giant leeches. As the, as the wiki says, welcome to the morgue. Wait, what the heck? <laughs> That's giant leeches for you. Giant leeches are very, very deadly. They are some of the more deadly monsters in the game. I'd argue they're even more dangerous than most monsters in level 5 and 6. Maybe that's just me, but that's been my experience of giant leeches. And, like, I've never had a good experience with giant leeches. They're just, they're, they're giant leeches. What, what do you expect? Oh, come on. Shift F5. Wait, what? Shift F5 does, what? I did not know that the function keys do did things. F5 just displays next level. What the heck? That's amazing. That's that's pretty cool. The more you know. Yeah, level 4. If you can survive on level 4, it's a great place to train. Monsters are really strong, but they give a good amount of experience, especially comparatively to anything before it. You can find a good variety of items. Pretty much most of the steel items can show up on level 4. As well as, can Adamantite Dagger show up? I forget. Anyway, most steel items show up on level 4. Some other pretty good weapons start showing up. Um, I don't have the list in front of me right now, but a lot of good stuff on level 4 to find. If you can survive it. Because, as you can see, there's monsters from all walks of life. All getting pretty strong and all very much desiring to kill you. Still wandering around to see if I can find a lynch demon or giant leeches, but it doesn't look like that's gonna happen. Again, thankfully they're very rare, but they still show up, and when they do show up they are very, very annoying. You're going to want either a party of several characters in their 40s to 50s of levels, or you're gonna, like, I guess not like 40s to 50s of like a party, but still, like a party of characters that have all gone through the optimal leveling route, or if it's your first party, then definitely, you know, 40s to 50s is not that extreme. I'm level like 90s to 100s, and as you can see, I've been in here a long time, but even I've taken like quite a bit of damage on most people. 
Except for my thief who was lucky. I don't know. He's in the back. So he's not getting targeted quite as much. Yeah, you're going to want a strong party. If you're going solo, be sure you have quite a bit of spells. And don't spend too much time here. Like, if you don't think you can survive it, because... If you run into giant leeches as a solo character, nine times out of ten, you are just instantly dead. Blackout traps are another thing that starts showing up on floor three. Floor four. Maybe they start on floor three, I forget. But they show up on floor four, and they take away all spells that have been cast on you. They don't take away your items... But they take away all spells cast. All resistances, feather essence, sight veil. Yeah. Be careful about blackout traps. Blackout and teleporter traps are the annoying traps of floor 4. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope this has been a fun and informative video for you. I'm sorry that I wasn't able to find a lynch demon or a pack of giant leeches. I'm not too sorry, but I'm sorry that I wasn't able to show off the nonsense for you. Um, yeah, nothing else really notable. The, the teleporter up here I talked about last time, that just takes you right here to the teleporter over here. And you can get there pretty quickly by taking the teleporter from floor 3, which will put you right behind it. Yeah. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. I've been Mithril Zenith, and I hope you've enjoyed Mortar Depths of Dungeon All Tips and Tricks. Uh, as always, comment if you want a particular uh, topic or level talked about. And until then, I'll see you next time. This is Mithril Zenith, signing out.